Well, hello, everybody. This is Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer, back for another, ex well, it's a Canadian immigration live Q&A. And uh, it's about 10.05 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'm a little bit early today on Wednesday. We have had um, a lot going on in the office. It's been busy, uh, but it's been exciting. There's been no shortage of things going on. And how can you fault it? You know, when you're busy, when you've got uh, some amazing people to work with, you can't have a better life than that. All right, now the big question for me is how well my new stream is going to speak with YouTube. I'm hoping that this is going to work. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to connect with, uh, with clients, both um, uh, YouTube and with Facebook. But the biggest comment, the biggest concern I have right now is whether or not comments are going to be visible. And I see a bunch of people uh, lining up here, but I'm not seeing any comments yet. So I know that there's a problem with YouTube that is going to be affecting um, or potentially could be affecting the comments that are coming in. But as I see here with Ravi, oh, I am so excited. Yes. All right. So you can see we have Ravi here, YouTube. At least we will have questions because the reality is... Um, <laughs> With, without questions, a live Q&A really is not that um, effective. So this is great. Today, guys, is a full live Q&A. I'm going to enlarge these just a little bit so everybody can see a little bit better. But today is a full-on live Q&A with me answering questions left and right as fast as I can. For those of you who are joining and wondering what this live Q&A is all about, my name is Mark Holthy. I am a Canadian immigration lawyer. I am the founder of the Canadian Immigration Institute, the host of the Canadian Immigration Podcast, and the creator of the Express Entry full do-it-yourself course um, on immigrating to Canada. So you have to check those things out. One day I'll figure out how to put some nice overlays that that flash all of these different things as I'm talking. <laughs> but right now, the key to all of this is me just being here, being available to answer your questions. And um, yes, yeah, so let's see everybody that's tuning in. This is the fun part. Make sure you always, always, um, and it looks like my, my audio is a little bit loud here. So I'm going to turn it down. I can see it peaking here. All right, let's see. Hopefully that's a little bit better. <laughs> all right, the one man show here with Igor on the side helping me. Um, Okay, let's see what we've got here for people tuning in. So, uh, okay, we've got someone from Saudi. That's great. Harpinder, how are you, my friend? Uh, we've got Andy Williams. Excellent, Andy. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Harris Mran says, howdy, Mark. Hello to you. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Jodet says, how are you? I'll be in touch with you soon to be able to get your services. I advise people to do the same. Jodet, thank you. That's awesome, my friend. I appreciate that. Okay, Ben's down in North Dakota. Wonderful. We got our U.S. representation. <clears throat> We've got uh, Firas is over in Toronto. Um, and uh, Inaga, how are you? Catherine? Uh, Melanie's up in Edmonton. Welcome, Melanie. How are you guys liking this time? Is this time period good for you guys? All right, we've got Cybertron. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, Victor's over in New York, another, another um, uh, U.S. representation, excellent. Okay, Sonu says, when will Canadian Visa open their services in India? Great question, Sonu. It will open when India removes the, um, the um, social distancing uh, um, policies that they have and when things are basically toned down with the virus because we know what's happening in India right now and so as long as the virus is is wreaking havoc um, and I understand things are really starting to spiral a little bit in India so my heart goes out to you guys there but ultimately the the key here um, is that when things start to, to loosen up in India then the offices are going to start to open up okay and then Sarah says what about the passport request for Outland same thing guys it all comes back to 
the travel restrictions that we're seeing all over the world and that Canada has in place. And until the travel restrictions are lifted, they're, they're not going to open it up for, um, for individuals to, uh, you know, to come. And some countries where things are starting to get a little bit better, we're starting to see movement on the applications. But for, uh, for passport requests, for outland applicants, it's not here yet. We're getting close. All right. Saji, we'll give you a hello, my friend. And uh, Firas says, our new citizenship applications are being processed. Everything that's paper-based is slowly, slowly starting to move forward now. And we are seeing that, um, you know, we're starting to see movement on our spousals. I just actually myself got a passport request for one of my work permit applicants in the U.S. Who's a, who is a USMCA or the old NAFTA professional. So we just got a passport request for him in the US. So we're starting to see some movement, okay? So there is positives. All right, uh, Alihan says, hi, Mark. And hey guys, I'm, I'm sure someone will probably ask about the scores and the rounds of invitations and things like that. And uh, I was one off last week. <laughs> I was one off. <laughs> I was hoping it would drop to 474, but I think it stayed at 475. Uh, Liliana, good to see you again. Thank you so much. All right, let's see what Mosin's got here. Mosin says, hey, Mark, hope you're doing well. I got a question as a physiotherapist. Can Cirrus of 365, is there any chance of getting PR? Got age 33. Your answer would be much appreciated. Mosin, 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 my friend. This is where I have to do one of these ones right here. And I think you guys can hear that, hopefully. But that little notification right there. <laughs> indicates that I need a whole lot more information to be able to tell you. You know, with a score of 365, definitely going through the general stream is not going to happen. Your your scores are too low to be able to be drawn through the regular stream, Mosin. But we have to canvas everything. We have to look at everything. I need to know a whole lot more about you, your family, um, your, you know, your work history, all of these things, your education. All right. Good question. Okay. I'm in says we missed you, Mark. Um, I'm not quite sure, but you're on Periscope, so big shout out to you, Amin. <laughs> well, I was away. Um, I had a little bit of a break on Monday. Um, I had a long weekend here, and I had to reschedule a number of consults because I forgot to block time off. And my wife said, Mark, you are coming with the family on Monday. And so I had to start my day at 7 a.m. yesterday, and I worked all the way through to 7 p.m. straight. No breaks whatsoever, consult after consult after consult, spousal review, EAPR review, reconsideration request review, consult, consult, consult. So it was a crazy day, and I am so, so grateful, and I'm actually super excited to let you guys know about a change that we made to our website that was recommended by some of our clients, and that change relates to how we book consults. So I'm gonna just pull a min off of here, and I wanna share this with you because I think it's pretty cool. At least I'm pretty happy about it. So as you know, HolthyLaw.com is our site. So HolthyLaw.com is where you can go to book a consult. You go here, you click start here. When you click start here and you scroll down, you will see instantly the three lawyers that are in the firm, myself, Susan, and Alicia. And Susan and Alicia, I tell you guys this all the time, are awesome. But look at what we got below here. You can book a consult instantly by clicking on the link, so if you, if you click on a link right here, it will take you to this wonderful place, which is, um, it shows basically the availability for consults. So now Susan has been completely overrun <laughs> with work, just like Mark here. But uh, if we go back here, I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back. Let's go to Alicia. So we click on Alicia and then you can see availability. So obviously today is September the 9th. Alicia has avail availability for, to book consults even today. And so that's how we've got it structured. And so you can go in, you can choose the lawyer that you want to, um, that you want to work with. If you look and you say, oh, I really want to have a consult with Susan um, and, and you click on hers, you'll see she doesn't have any availability this month um, because she's trying to get caught up in all the other work. You say, oh, okay, well, what am I going to do? Well, there are two other awesome lawyers at Healthy Law, Healthy Immigration Law, that is. And so you can go and then you can click the link and then you can identify the, uh, the next available consultation. So 
there you go. I wanted to shout the, uh, give the big shout out for that because I think it's an awesome development. And as we continue to add lawyers, you are going to have the ability to choose if I'm not available, there's going to be another awesome lawyer that can connect with you and do a consult. So I just wanted to share that with all of you guys because I think personally, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> all right, let's see what else we got here. Okay. Oh, here. please let us know. Is it just enough to get in touch with you on your website? Yes, Jodette. That's exactly just like I showed you right there. That's the way to do it. And there's a reason that I don't just put my email out there. Guys, if you saw my email, if you saw it every day, now that I'm the national chair of the Canadian Bar Association, there are tons of emails that go through. In fact, I worked till about nine o'clock last night going through all of the emails to get caught up. Monday was a busy day for me because of the consults, but um, uh, today is kind of Wednesday. Well, I should say Tuesday was a busy day for me, um, but Wednesday is my catch-up day. It's the day that I do my recordings. It's the day that I do my videos. I was just about able to get um, a lawyer on, my very first lawyer, to join me in my immigration nation. And I'm going to shut that off there in my Immigration Nation, which is uh, this new playlist that I'm going to have on my channel. That's where I bring on an immigration lawyer and we talk about the most um, challenging aspects of immigration. We talk about the lawyer, we talk about their practice, and it's a way to just highlight the awesome work that lawyers are doing, immigration lawyers are doing across the country. So unfortunately, he had to, he had to cancel on me because he had a family emergency and um, I hope everything's okay with him, but I'm hoping to have him back next week. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to start announcing it. It's probably going to be on Wednesday afternoons, um, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but Wednesday is my recording day, and I'm getting ready to launch my Wild Tips on Immigration. Um, I had all of these things go wrong. It seems like when, when it rains, it pours, and I had an issue with my... Um, <clears throat> with my external hard drive where well external storage device where I I keep um all of my videos and it was corrupted <laughs> so <laughs> so it prevented me from getting the videos launched which is so frustrating but there's going to be lots of stuff coming and this here right now is definitely going to be a live Q&A for all of you okay let's take a look here harsh says hello our supervisor applications open can we apply for our parents it depends. It depends, Harsh. It depends upon the visa office. It depends upon the country. And, uh, and so um, parents do fit in some circumstances within the travel restrictions for traveling to Canada. But it just depends on your country. Because if there's biometrics required and you can't get biometrics, then nothing's going to happen. If the visa application centers are not open, then nothing's going to happen. Okay. All right. Ravi says here, <coughs> excuse me. Hey, Mark, should we expect CEC draw this Wednesday? And if yes, what could be the cutoff? Okay. So let's go back here. Let's flip back to the website and let's take a look here. We're going to go to the rounds of invitations, express entry, and let's take a look. So when with this on this site here, we can see where the most recent uh, draws have taken place. You can see September the 2nd, 2020. Now, that was just last week. So I can say that I, I seriously doubt that there would be a CEC draw this week. It tends to be every two weeks that this is happening. It's possible, but usually every two weeks. And if that's the case, then probably next uh, that next Wednesday would be when the round of invitation would occur. And you can see here, 475. I just missed it. I was, I was kind of guessing that it would be right around 474, but it was 475. But they did have a pretty large draw, 4,200. So you can see the demand that's happening now in Canada. There are so many applicants that are coming into the pool now that it's keeping that round of invitation level so high, so high. All right, let's jump back here. Okay. Okay, next on the list here as we're cruising, uh, let's see, we've got a question from Ben. He says, do I use a Canadian address or U.S. for my paper PR Manitoba application? Well, my friend, I don't know where you live, Ben. <laughs> so the address that you use um, for your paper-based Manitoba application, I'm assuming if you submit it, it's going to be, well, if it's, I think you probably are saying you have a nomination from Manitoba. And if that's the case, 
I don't know exactly what stage. If you are, if it's a passport request or if it is um, you're filing your APR now after receiving the nomination, I'm not quite sure, Ben. So you're going to have to give me a little bit more clarification there. Raya, hello from India. Welcome. We've got Catherine from Saudi Arabia. Uh, Farshad's tuning in from Iran. Welcome, Farshad. It's great to have you. Monica says, uh, visitor or work permit, apply uh, hi from India. <laughs> okay, well, great, Monica. I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. Uh, Saji says, when can the travel restrictions of post-March 18th expect to be lifted? So we just had that question, which is, well, we didn't technically have that question, but the reality is, <coughs> excuse me, we're just not sure. So we know they're extended till the end of September, and we just have to wait month by month. But as long as the cases the, of, of coronavirus continue to increase, continue, there's no vaccine, then there's going to be social distancing. There's going to be travel restrictions. Andy, hi, how are you? Um, Al Saba, hello, good to see you. I'm trying to give everybody a shout out this time. Liz is in Crimea, wonderful. Welcome, Liz. Thanks for connecting. Uh, Ishfak says, what about journalism? Well, Ishvak, I don't know. I'm assuming if you're saying, how does someone with journalism qualify? Well, I need a whole lot more information, my friend, and I, I, I recommend that you, you, slide over to, um, uh, you slide over to our page here and, uh, and book a consult, and we can tell you what the prospects are for journalism. All right. Okay, continuing on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ramesh, Tokyo. Very cool. Welcome, Ramesh. Okay, <laughs> Canada Info Vlogs, that's great. Hi, Mark, good day to you too. And Muhammad, shout out to you. Uh, Ottawa, Tammy, great to have you joining. And uh, 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 Ankita is over in Singapore. Um, Gurjeet says, is it a good time to apply for a visa or visa? There's nothing stopping you from applying. Understand if, you know, there's going to be this big wave of people who have visitor visa applications in the queue. There's no harm in applying now. Remember, it's going to sit there until the travel restrictions are lifted, but there's no, nothing preventing you from submitting that application. All right. Um, <laughs> Mooncake says, perfect, 6 p.m. in Europe. Great. I'm glad this is a lot better for you guys. And it's kind of fun. You know, this is just a live Q&A. Uh, it's just kind of rough and tumble. It's not the same way as my other offerings are going to be, where they tend to be a lot more focused and topical. This is all about just answering you guys' questions. So keep them coming. And there are a ton. <laughs> okay. And so this is one, uh, Ragu, that I want to tell you. This one is really comes down to one of these. So if you ask a question uh, like Ragu here that's a little bit more um, in-depth in terms of specifically related to your situation, that, that tends to flip the needle over to legal advice. And so in your situation here... Um, you know, when it comes to the question, he says, my wife is pursuing two years business administration diploma. Will it be a problem to get AINP? She doesn't have any business relevant studies in the past. Um, Ragu, if you're in Alberta, I really recommend that you book a consult because we're going to need a whole lot more information to sort through um, whether or not she has a chance or not. And remember, the Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program has recently <clears throat> announced, at least from the political arm, that they're going to look at reducing the total number of nominations by one third. So we'll see where that goes. Okay, uh, Ronell says, can I ask, since I'm on my restoration of status as a visitor, my question is, can I process an extension or renew my visitor record while waiting for the result? Well, <clears throat> this doesn't make a lot of sense, Ronell, because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're in the process of restoring your status already, uh, applying for an extension or to renew that doesn't make sense because that's essentially what you're doing. You're restoring back as a visitor. All right. <laughs> Mauricia, it's awesome to have you join. Guys, this is the intake person, Mauricia Carr. When you book a consult and you have that communication with info, this is Mauricia. So she had some time to jump on. She's been just invaluable to my office. Mauricia was a past client. She started with the DIY guide. She's been an unbelievable moderator and, and, and just a tremendous support on the Express Entry Law Private Facebook group. Some of you, I don't know if you YouTubers are even aware of the Express Entry Law Private Facebook group, but let me just see if I can pull it up here. 
Who hates the interface that Facebook has created? This new interface is such a pain. Oh my goodness. It's so hard to find anything. And uh, so let's, I'm going to go here and I'm going to open up the, uh, the private, the express entry uh, right here. And you can see this express entry law is, oh, I wonder where it's, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I got to switch, slide this over so you guys can see maybe. All of these people are in the way. Oh, look at this. Facebook finally, finally allowed the group to cross over 125,000 people. Unbelievable. It's been sitting at 124,000 for, I don't know, two years. This is crazy. Wow. This all, that's it. There's going to be celebration in the land. There is going to be some massive discounts on my express entry DIY course. I'm going to offer and promote a discount in honor of this 125,000 new current members of the group. That is so amazing. Anyway, so you can see 124,800 members. That's what I put in there. It's, it was, it's been around since 2015, over five years now, this group. And wow, and we've got 23 member requests, 23 new ones. This is so amazing. And so as I show you guys here, if you answer the question, then you get approved. Approve. I love approving people who answer the questions that I ask. Look at all these awesome people. No response, decline. You have to be a real person. Approve, approve. <laughs> this is awesome. Decline, you didn't answer any questions. Approve, approve. And this group is awesome, you guys. Any questions you have about immigration, um, and you can see if they, all they have to do is answer the questions. And if they don't, or if they're invited, in this case, this person was invited. So I will approve them, even though they didn't answer the questions. Okay, so we'll decline that one because this consulting agency didn't even request or didn't even take the time. I don't just decline them because they are uh, immigration consultants or immigration lawyers. But if you don't take the time to even answer the questions, and Siddharth, uh, you know, he didn't respond to all of the questions, uh, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Today, I'm feeling generous. <laughs> and so you can see anyone who doesn't, actually fill in the answers um, won't get uh, uh, won't be admitted to the group so this is basically how I do it well he agrees but Mark didn't really answer any other questions okay I'll give him the benefit of the doubt but no responses there we go oh this is so cool wow that is that just made my day today was starting off a little sluggish oh my goodness but I'll tell you it was Oh, I am so, so excited. This is awesome. All right, so Marissa, there you go. Fantastic. One of my prized, precious uh, employees of Healthy Immigration Law and super excited to have her. I'll, I'll tell you guys something. Because this is a rough and tumble and I can talk about whatever I want to talk about, um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, this morning, um, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, if I hit snooze, and maybe you're just like me, and you go back to sleep, I have these crazy dreams. And you guys know how much I love teaching, how much I love presenting, how much I love doing these videos, interacting with you. I really feed off it and it just makes me, I don't know, just energized. I love doing this. It's, it's, how, it's how I'm wired. Well, sometimes, like I said, when I wake up, hit my snooze, go back to sleep, I have these crazy dreams. Well, this morning, it was one of the most unsettling dreams I've had in a long time. And normally, immigration lawyers who have their big YouTube channels are not sharing what they had in their dreams. But this morning, I dreamt that I was invited to go to a conference where there were a whole bunch of companies. And my responsibility was talking about labor market impact assessments, teaching them how to do that. And I think I was also invited to talk about enforcement and the border and problems with that. And so everything was so vivid, so distinct. But when it was my turn to speak, no one would pay attention to me. In fact, there was these weird barriers set up in the in the room where I was trying to speak where people were kind of behind them and they would just they just weren't paying attention I try to engage them and you know how much I you know I I really really work to to make things entertaining for you guys but these people in my dream these companies just didn't want to listen to me and they were ignoring me and it was so frustrating and I tried every kind of angle to build to bring them in to engage them and nothing was working to the point where I just 
I was just so frustrated. And then it just transitioned to the next person. And it was like I wasn't even there. And so that was when Mark has nightmares, those are the nightmares that all of you amazing people who are watching and coming on these live Q&As that you uh, <laughs> that that no one shows up. Right. And that I'm here talking into a, a, a camera lens and there's no one here. So fortunately, you guys have been awesome and that hasn't been the case. All right. So let's continue down here. Oh, I just had to share that. So T got an ITA. Yay. Big snap. Big snap for T. Fantastic. All right. Omar in Ethiopia. Great to have you. Uh, we've got Malik. Great to have you. Let's see what we've got here. Um, Kurdi says, uh, hey, I have got um, a reference letter from my former employer. It has the CEO sign in company's details like website, phone number, company address, but not CEO's phone number or email. Will it work? You need to have somewhere for the officer to reach out if they feel in the rarest situation that they want to contact someone. So I would recommend and make sure that, um, uh, that you know, it's, it's always best. I see that there's a phone number for the company. Um, it's great, though, that if they have a, a way for them to be contacted. So if the company's email is there, if the company uh, phone number is there, you can probably get around that, but it does ask for that person's contact information. Okay, Ed over in Dubai. Welcome, Ed. Good to have you. Uh, Arjun says, work permit application pending since March. Ours are starting to move. So it depends on the country that you're in, Arjun, whether or not your work permit's actually going to start moving forward. <clears throat> okay. Vixie is tuning in. Oh, finally, my first opportunity to join your live chat. Vixie from Indonesia. Hello, and big shout out to you. That's great. We haven't had too many people from Indonesia, so that's great. Okay. <laughs> and August says, the timing is perfect. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Okay, Amin says that Prometheus, congratulations. That's what I love. Shout out to the people who have success. Um, okay, Andy, my word on the street is that Canadian biometrics are going to start opening up by reservation, by appointment. And, uh, and also, one of my clients just got a biometrics request just yesterday. And so we, we think that it's going to be moving forward. And, and hopefully, uh, within Canada, those biometric collection points, which are our Service Canada centers, are going to start opening up. Um, okay. Okay, Neil says, hey, where do you see FSW in a year? That's a good question. Um, the, you know, the Canadian Bar Association, we typically don't get involved into providing levels planning direction to, uh, to uh, immigration. That's not something that we do. But as immigration lawyers, um, we do have opportunities to reach out to the decision makers in our personal capacities and let them know where, where we should go. We know that our levels in Canada for, for admitted PRs are probably one third of where they should be. You know, maybe even 30% of, of where they should be as far as people actually landing in Canada. And so we do know that all of these people that haven't landed doesn't mean they're, they've just gone away. It just means that next year when things are opened up and people can actually travel, there's going to be a massive influx of people coming to Canada. In fact, you know what? If I was, <laughs> if I was a betting man, I would almost consider uh, investing in... Um, you know, in, in a bed and breakfast or Airbnb, <laughs> because when people come, they're going to need a place to stay. And there's going to be a lot of people that are coming once the travel restrictions are lifted. That's a good point. I should think about doing that. <laughs> so, so I'm hopeful that next year things are going to continue on as normal, but we just don't know. Um, as far as the FSW, it's not going away. So don't worry about that, Neil. They're not just going to cancel that program. No, it's always going to be there. But how it looks and whether they tweak the actual um, the, the CRS criteria, we just don't know. So we'll have to see. Okay, lots of positive feedback about this time. Great. Hey, that's perfect, Melanie. I'm glad this is a perfect time for you. And thanks for joining. All right, we've got Zishan is tuning in from Pakistan. And immigration is open for Pakistan. It is, unlike India. All right, we've got Haris from India. Welcome. Uh, Harsh says, hey, Mark, can we apply online for parent super visas? Yes, you can, Harsh, you can. In fact, we're working with a client right now. Ultimately, once again, um, you know, the, the, the travel restrictions and where you're at, you, the country you're from, you have to follow ru specific rules um, as you're going forward. 
but parents can travel to see their children in Canada. Okay. All right. Harsey says, hey, Mark, will there be a tech draw for Ontario this year? With uh, the TF starting uh, starts in India soon. Any idea on both these things? Well, tech draw, in a, we already had a tech draw, my friend, uh, for the OINP. In fact, I've got probably five or six clients um, that I'm working with as they have submitted their um, response to the notification of interest from the OINP. So there actually has been one. Okay, all right. Um, okay, this one is a little bit longer, but let's see if we can get to it here. So Harpreet says, oh, let's see, it bounced away. Let's try that one there. Maybe it's too long here. Okay, there we go. So Harpreet says, um, from India, okay, my name is mentioned, given name, X, Y, surname, not applicable on all documents, except on the West, where I mistakenly mentioned my name as first name and X as last name, and I got an ITA. Do I need to provide one and same person document? No, <laughs> no, you're fine. You know, your passport's going to be the thing that drives the ship anyways. So whatever it says on your passport, follow the rules. Um, uh, what you know that IRCC has uh, um, has given for for when you don't have a surname on your passport, and well, let's let's take a look because other people may have this same issue. What if my I, I have two names, um, and let me see if I can pull it up here quick. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over so you guys can see it. Okay, so this is um, the help center for IRCC has a lot of these responses. So um, what do you mean by surname is the question. So your surname is your family name. It's also called your last name. When filling out applications, type your surname as it appears on your passport. Do not use initials. Here's the answer. If you do not have a family name on your passport, then enter all your given names in the surname field and, live the, and leave the given name blank. Do not enter not applicable or not a or not or na short for not applicable. Okay, great. There we go. Okay, moving on here. All right. Uh, okay, so Hassan's from Bangladesh. Great to have you. Uh, Ishan is down in Texas. Hello, my friend. Uh, Farshad says, does the two-step study permit process apply for undergraduate students who want to start on January two thousand twenty-one? Understand this two-step process. You meet. Step one, the eligibility. Then you can start studying online, essentially. And then once the travel restrictions are lifted, then you can continue your studies. So 2021, we're still waiting to see how things are going to play out. But right now, that's the direction that things are looking. Okay, we've got um, uh, Abu Dhabi, Romel. Great to have you. And we've got Tom Cruise back again from Mississauga. Good to see you, <laughs> Darshan. <laughs> What is that picture from? Like, that looks like an older Tom Cruise. All right. Um, okay. So this one here, I'll just bring that one up a little bit slow, connecting. Okay. This person has, um, Ihan says, I have Canadian education, foreign experience, but due to COVID, I couldn't ever make it a full-time Canadian experience. Aiming to get CLB9. This one, my friend, I'm going to give you a little one of these. And I'm going to also recommend that you flip over here and book a consult with one of us so that we can actually go through and give you the advice that you need. Because, hey, let's face it, guys, when you are um, when you're asking questions about whether or not you qualify, we need a whole lot more information because you may not be telling us enough for us to actually be able to give you all of the options that are available. And I, I wouldn't want to uh, to be restricted in, in the direction and advice that we're giving you. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. This is a fun one here. Marie says, hi, Mark from not sure where. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to close down a few of my windows here. I'm not going to get on a big, big complaining session today about Microsoft, but I'll tell you, I use it for all of my clients. I use Microsoft and I use SharePoint and I have a Mac and those two devices do not always equate. And so I have had a massive issue with the syncing into my local drives um, with Microsoft SharePoint. And so I know some of you are, are Microsoft fans. Some of you are not. I'm not a Microsoft fan. Uh, but it seemed like it was going to work really well for our company uh, when we're 
you know, uh, interacting with our clients and reviewing documents and reviewing applications. And I don't know if I've told you guys this, but that is the absolute most amazing way of representing people to be able to work directly one-on-one -on -one with them. I love it. Anyways, Microsoft has not been cooperating. So we're looking at options and one that I'm looking at is Box. So if any of you guys are using Box, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you think it's actually a, a product that makes sense for us to use. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Monica says, hey, where do you live in Canada? I live in Lethbridge, Alberta. That's where I live. And I'm going to show you guys where I live. Let's see if we can pull up Google Maps here. And I'm going to show you guys. Okay. Open it up. Let's see if we can adjust this okay here we go i'm gonna show you guys where i live all right so here we go here is the map of well let's make it even bigger i guess we could right let's okay so we'll zoom in we'll zoom out all right we're zooming out further this is canada look at the size of this country wow that is my country right there canada so you can see there's canada right there that's where i live so I am nestled right next close within striking distance to the Rocky Mountains. And you can see here Lethbridge right there. And just a short little drive into the mountains. And many of you probably also hear me talking about Waterton. And if you look right over here and you follow my cursor, you will see right here is Waterton Lakes National Park. And that's where I love to go and spend time. Although we have done a lot of hiking in the mountains and all through these, this, this mountain range through here is just amazing, wonderful, wonderful uh, experiences. And um, in my wild tips on immigration, I'm actually going to be uh, giving those tips from a number of those locations all stretched across the Rocky Mountains. So stay tuned. I hope to release the first one this week. And um, like I said, I've had trouble with this external drive, but I may just uh, find a different way to uh, create the videos and get the first one launched. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay, now this is interesting. Okay, so Canada, I'm not immigration, <laughs> so I, I have no control over how they're going to process these applications. So don't be deceived. I am Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer. I am not immigration, citizenship and immigration Canada, nor immigration refugees and citizenship Canada, um, which is what they are called these days. All right. Okay, this is another one, Enkita. She says, is Ottawa Visa Office functional? How long can we expect to receive a reply after sending ready to travel web form? Um, Enkita, I understand the challenge. Many, many people are in this situation. Uh, right now, overseas applicants, the key here is the, still the travel restrictions. So it may not be the complement of offices, officers in the Ottawa Visa Office and maybe the location that you're traveling from. And if the travel restrictions are not lifted, they are not moving forward with those um, with any great level of haste. All right, Shaheen is in Singapore. Um, Darshan, we're just going to have to wait and see when the biometrics are open. Um, and uh, I just will give a quick shout out here to Victor. Victor, my client got one as well. So you just have to wait and keep checking for your biometrics to see when those visa off, uh, when the biometrics collection points are open. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's keep going here. Um, understand guys that some of the questions that you're asking, I'm gonna sip through. I may pass your question. If I do, don't take it personal. I'm trying to find the questions that are going to be the most um, uh, useful to everyone. All right. Now I'm going to give Rajesh a little shout out here. I'm not going to get into detail because this could take quite a while to address, but uh, Rajesh is, is asking what's the difference between Saskatchewan in demand and express entry? Well, the biggest issue, one, 68 points. You can see the, 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 the draw totals from Saskatchewan. They're over 70 to a large extent. But the main difference between these two is that in-demand is paper-based and express entry is express entry. So the in-demand is going to be a lot slower, probably up to two years, whereas express entry 
if the world wasn't so crazy, would be more um, in line with the six months processing once you get the nomination. So that's the biggest difference between the two. Okay, and if anybody asks about, do I qualify? I'm also going to just skip past you guys um, and so that, so that I can uh, uh, get to the questions that relate to the most people that are watching because I really want these to be as beneficial to the vast majority of people as possible, okay? So once again, if you have a specific question, hey, do I qualify? What are my chances? Then I'm going to direct you guys back every single time um, right here to our firm website. I pushed the wrong button there to the firm website here where you can book a consult with one of our awesome, awesome lawyers here. Okay, <clears throat> let's get back on track. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a scratchy voice this morning. Okay, um, okay, so Manny says, hey, can we apply for a study visa while we are already an express entry file active in the pool? Thanks. There's nothing stopping you from applying. I don't want anyone to feel like just because you have a, an express entry application in the pool that you can't submit a study permit application. That's not the case. You can, but one of the key factors in a study permit application is showing how this study is going to help you return back home and <clears throat> improve your employment prospects in your home country to help advance your career plan. If you have an express entry application in the pool, you're telling immigration that I actually want to one day become a permanent resident. Now, the legislation accommodates for someone who has dual intent, the intention to be a permanent resident one day while still having the intention of completely abiding by all of the temporary conditions on a temporary application, like a study permit or a work permit. <clears throat> but for my clients, I don't want to give the officer any reason to 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 weigh the side of refusal down because someone has a permanent resident application in the queue. So I, uh, you know, and even an express entry uh, profile. So I always advise my clients that if you're thinking about studying in Canada, you know you're not going to get an ITA right now, then don't submit your profile. Hold off and um, submit the study permit application first. And then if that fails, well, you, you can always go back into the pool. But I only advise this for people who do not, I know they do not have a chance of getting an express entry and through express entry and getting an ITA. And the only option they have is to try to find a way to get some study or work in Canada to increase their CRS through other means. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Nehal says, hello from Bangladesh. Really appreciate what you're doing for us. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. And guys, I want you to know that I really appreciate what you're doing for me. So understand the whole purpose of starting this channel, this group, was to help you guys to protect yourselves from being taken advantage of by overseas consultants and agents who, whose sole purpose is just to take your money and who would tell you, and I saw this repeatedly when I was involved with some of the original working groups for Express Entry, I knew that there was going to be a whole bunch of people all over the world that would be utilizing overseas people, representatives, to help them file their applications because they just didn't understand the system. <clears throat> well, how many times did I see people who were eligible for Express Entry pay their agent or their consultant $1,000 or $1,500 to be put into the pool knowing and the agent knew that they did not have a prayer of getting an ITA. But yet they still took their money. So you think, oh, I'm eligible for express entry. Congratulations, pay the money. I'll help you get your application in the pool. And then they just funnel a whole bunch of people into the pool knowing that they don't have a chance of ranking high enough to get the ITA. So I created this. I created this especially, and I, this is a good time as any to shift gears. And I want to show you what I'm talking about, this Canadian Immigration um, Institute and my course. So I'm going to hopefully push the right button this time. So here is my website, the Canadian Immigration Institute. If you go here to see our courses, you guys have to do this, all right? You absolutely have to do this. You have to go in. It is completely free. The first two modules of this course used to be paid. And I decided that people just need this extra help. So I've opened it up for free. So go to the Canadian Immigration Institute.com website, go here, and, and um, all you have to do is put your email address in, sign up for free, and you'll get access to the, two, the first two modules. Within those modules, and I don't think I actually have the, um, 
I don't think I have my actual login saved here. Maybe I do. Let's see. No, I never do. And I can't remember oh. what the password is either. <laughs> I know that I have. Uh... Oh, it's so funny. Let's see if I let's see if I can remember what it is here. Actually, maybe I should just flip back here while I'm doing this. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can log in and show you guys what's on the inside here. Um, uh, dang it. I can never remember what the password is because I don't usually log in like myself. Okay, I have to stop that. Well, it was a good hope. I'd, I'd hope that I could be able to log in and just show you guys. Um, the first two modules of the course, and if you click learn more, the first two modules are all about whether or not you're eligible for express entry. It teaches you what it is, and it's a video uh, format, but it teaches you what it is. It's a step-by-step -step process through the whole express entry uh, course. And like I said, the first two modules cover um, basically what it is, how the comprehensive ranking system works, and then it transitions to eligibility, determining whether or not you're eligible and whether or not you actually have a chance of getting an ITA. And that is free. And the reason that I do this, and I guess I better shift over here, with this, when you go to the, the course here, you can read all about it. You can watch the um, regular price is $497. And it's probably a good time now to tell you guys that if you're interested in purchasing this, um, I am going to announce uh, somewhere, <laughs> I'm not sure where, even a deeper discount than this one right here. So EEDIY50, those of you who are faithfully attending this, if you punch that in, you get 50% off. But I think I may dip it down just a little bit lower in honor of the Express Entry DIY Guide um, well, in honor of it being the flagship of the whole Express Entry Law Facebook page, and I think I just showed you guys previously that this group right now, and we'll close this off, right now has crossed over 125,000 members, which is unbelievable. I'm so, so excited about it, but I'm going to offer even a better discount uh, for individuals who, who subscribe to the guide because that guide has made all of this possible. All right, let's jump back here. So, um, yeah, so so basically what I'm saying is um, I created all of this to help people um, educate themselves so that they knew, yes, you know, my clients are what, people that are DIYers at heart, but value, you know, retaining me to give things a second look, to make sure that everything is, is correct, and we do it collaboratively together, me and the client, before they submit their own application. They control their own process. It's in their own MyCIC. And that's how we operate within our firm here. And so for people that are looking to, um, you know, to retain someone to help them, that's totally cool. You know, I have nothing against you retaining someone in your home country to help you that is a regulated immigration consultant or an immigration lawyer. But the issue that I have is you not understanding when people, representatives, are telling you, hey, you're eligible, and then you give them money with no hope of actually being able to immigrate to Canada. So this DIY course, <clears throat> those first two modules are free. You watch those videos. It will help you to see whether or not it even makes sense to continue you know, pursuing Canada. All right? Okay. Whew. There was a long, long worded response, but I think it was really important that I covered that. Okay, let's see. Um, Eddie says, hey, I'll bet you'll have a huge demand for your great services in Banff Lake Louise area as most people here on holiday visas and need your services. Yes, I agree. I absolutely agree. We spent um, a little bit of time with my family in Lake Louise just recently. It was wonderful. Usually it is crawling with tourists, but we were actually able to get up to the lakes and see things, which is really cool. Okay, <clears throat> um, Sile says... Uh, how does uh, how do the odds for a 450 look like? Okay, so Sayil, I would love to give you um, you know uh, a direct answer to that, but it's really hard because we just don't know where things are at. What we've seen from the OINP is that the man the demand is still really high. So even 450, I don't think it would drop down that far for the human capital priority stream, the general. CRS one. I think it's going to be in the 460s. Um, and then as far as the cutoff, 
Also, by mid-2021, it just seems like the popularity of the Canadian programs are increasing and increasing because countries like the U.S. and Australia are closing off all avenues. So, Canada is just going to become more and more popular. So, down to 450 for the open draws, um, even with the OINP, I think is unlikely. Okay, uh, Agam says, 475, do you think I'll make it in the next FSW? Well, one month from now, essentially... Um, that's probably when they're going to be doing another open draw. And I think based on the fact we were 475 this time, you've got a good chance, Agam. You've got a good chance. All right, Marie, welcome. Watching from the Philippines. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a good question, actually. I'll pull up the question here that I received from from uh, Kandari here. He says, hey, I've already submitted my application for hospitality job with positive LMIA. Just want to know, basically, will they approve my application or no, as there are many people lost their jobs. With the LMIA, if the LMIA was approved, I've never seen a situation where they've now pulled back and, uh, and refused to issue the work permit because there's been some blanket removal of LMIAs. But it depends on the destination. It depends on where you're headed. You know, Alberta has indicated an indication that they are going to be, um, they're going to be seriously reducing the number of LMIAs that um, are going to be issued. But we don't have any any details about that. Okay, and like I said, if you're asking, uh, Muhammad, big shout out to you. If you're asking specific questions. Always, always, guys, I encourage you to flip back and, and go here to our Canadian, our, the Whole Immigration Law website and, uh, and go here and book a consult. So any questions related to you specifically uh, that are not of general interest to everybody that are listening, those ones really need to go through the consult process. You click start here and then you... Um, and then it'll take you right here and you can choose the lawyer that you'd like to book your, your consult with, okay? So just a, just a, a little shout out there because I don't want people who see me skipping their comments saying, Mark, why didn't you answer my question? And largely it's because that, my friend, is legal advice, okay? But congratulations, Muhammad. That is awesome. That is so, so cool. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Elena says, um, hello, Mark. Currently I'm trying... Uh, to to get admitted to the Bar Association in BC. Then I want to be an immigration officer. I've learned many things from you. Thanks, Mark. Love to see your chat. That's awesome, Elena. Congratulations. Okay. Um, okay, here's a classic. The employer who doesn't provide pay slips. So could I request him to mention all monthly salaries on the letter head with his signature? Will that work? Understand pay slips, pay slips are required if available. The letter itself should indicate what your wage is. Having them list all of those um, pay statements, how much you were paid each month, well, it's probably not necessary. I don't think it's going to add anything more than the actual pay slips would provide. Um, do you have uh, any, any bank statements that show the deposits of those pay slips? That may be another workaround if you can't get them. But remember, the pay slips in and of themselves are still discretionary for the general express entry process you know um uh, uh applications various pnps like the ontario immigrant nominee program um sometimes they actually request that you do provide proof that you've been paid through those pay slips but for the general provision it is technically optional okay let's see here let's see what do we have here so we have percy see if it opens up Okay, let's see. Percy says, I'm in the process of giving my entire study per oh, permit for you to get it done for me. I'll send all my documents. But my question is, please, I have a student loan given to me uh, by a savings and loan finance financial service. Is that okay for a proof of funds since there is a letter from the finance institution and the loan approval form? Percy, that's something that we should talk about internally within the office. Uh, many people have those questions. The funds have to be available, right? And so lots of students in Canada do get loans to study. But it's a little bit of a nuanced thing that I'm not going to be able to answer without actually looking and determining exactly what that source of funds are, the amount of it, and your overall education plan and how, how it all fits in. So, Percy, there's a reason you reached out, my friend, and it's because of that, because this is clearly uh, legal advice, and my friend, you are paying for it. Okay, let's see what we got here. Here's another sad one. So my spouse's application has been sitting in Jamaica again 
following approval of our appeal for four months, how can I get our application moving? <clears throat> go back to your lawyer, go back to who, uh, who helped you to do the appeal. And sometimes there are uh, things called mandamus applications that are there to force applications to go forward. But understand right now, outland applications, even paper-based, there are things that have to be done in the local visa offices there. And it just may be a product of, of the travel restrictions, although they don't apply to spouses, um, the social distancing, whatever the restrictions are for the Canadian embassy or consulate in Jamaica that's processing the, you know, the, the passport and the visa imprinting, they, they more than likely are just backed up. Remember, this four-month period that you've been in has been all through the pandemic. So it may be less a factor of them just not moving forward and more a factor of them just not being able to do it. All right. Okay, guys, we have had an awesome, awesome um, day today. There's been so many people that have posted comments, questions. I've not been able to get to all of them. Um, I'm just skimming through here. Um, <laughs> Some people are getting a little bit irritated about reposting questions, and I understand that. Remember, there's YouTube, there's Facebook, and there's Periscope, and I've been answering questions on all three of those. So, yes, you do need to be a little bit more patient. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just seeing here if there's a few last minute questions before I wrap this up. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see here. Lots of thank yous and thank you guys for, for those very, very positive comments. That's why I do everything I do here. Um, okay, yeah, <laughs> so I'll just post this just so people can, can understand. <clears throat> Jodet says, hey, do you offer service to help other people to find his or her best option to come to Canada? Of course. You know, it's not just express entry. That's right. Um, and, and that's what we do within the consultations. And one of the most important things that we do, Jodet, is we help people to know whether or not they actually even have a chance of immigrating. And so sometimes my response to someone is, Canada isn't right for you. You should consider other countries or double down in your own country to make your life as good as you possibly can and to not channel your resources pursuing something where you don't have a hope of qualifying. So Jodat, sometimes that's the advice I give clients, <clears throat> but at least it's advice they can rely on and then plan out their life. Okay, lots of positive comments. Thank you so much, guys. You know who you are. I really appreciate it. Okay, here's a question. This one is from Sunil. He says, hey, I'm from India. How is the job market in Canada right now? Are employers hiring? Yes, some employers are hiring. They are. But generally speaking, there is a very, very suppressed job market, obviously because of the pandemic. Businesses are not operating at full scale, especially the service industry. A lot of that industry has really, really been hit hard. Uh, tourism um, any any of the things, whether it's food service, whether it's just other uh, retail service, <clears throat> that industry has been hit really, really hard. <clears throat> and um, but areas like agriculture and things like that, uh, healthcare, um, all of those areas are are um, you know obviously looking for people. Okay. So uh, Mooncake here says, is the average time of six months for PR application processing through EE, is it expected to increase? Yes, absolutely it is. Okay. Um, Kathy, I'll give you a shout out from Alberta. Wonderful. Thanks for tuning in. Um, okay, let's see here. Yeah, so people are asking about biometric updates in India, which we've talked about, Gurpreet. It all depends on India. It all depends on what's happening there. Let's see. Okay, Cheetan, same thing, Cheetan. Uh, 462 for the open draws for express entry. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, okay, and some of you, I think I've already answered these. And, and yes, you guys are multiple posting. Uh Yeah, and so people have kind of reworded it. For example, I've um, yeah, I've already answered that question, Curdy, that it's good to have it, but it is, um, uh, yeah, you do the best that you can. <laughs> Masood says, hey, Mark, just stop to say you're the man. Thank you. And guys, the, all of these questions are amazing. I think what I need to do is have uh, a moderator actually scroll through and post the questions for me. <laughs> I think that might be a little bit better. Uh, let's see here. Who else do we have here? Um, 
Okay, so here's a tough one. And this one, Bia, I really r recommend uh, that you actually book a consult for this one. I'm so sorry to hear that your husband had a heart attack. How, how terrible. I want to go back home. I'm under a work permit until June 2021. Can I go home? Bia, you need to book a consult with us so that we can talk about the logistics because it may be possible, yes, for you to go home and return, but it also depends on a whole bunch more information that you're not able to provide here, like what your work is. Um, is it essential? Because all of those things are a factor in whether or not you can return. Okay. Um, okay, Liz says uh, the completion date for our EE was May 3rd. Yes, many people were in that situation. Still no information. Is it okay? Yep, you're just in limbo. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm really trying to get to... <laughs> And Ramesh says, the Express Entry Law Facebook page is awesome. Yes, it is. It is absolutely awesome. And 125,000 finally. That is so amazing. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. This is kind of a general question here from Shale. He says, does having two years of work experience increase the CRS score as opposed to having just one year in work experience? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to wrap up with this one just for Shale, and we're going to go right to the source so that going forward, Shale will be able to um, uh, look this up himself. And Shale, I would highly encourage you to go take advantage of the free, we'll just pull this up here, <clears throat> the free two modules uh, for my, <clears throat> my Canadian Immigration Institute express entry do-it-yourself course i'm going to strongly encourage you to take advantage of those but let's go over here i'm searching up the crs criteria when it comes to the federal skilled worker program and the eligibility for that um, it doesn't make a difference it's only once you hit three that it makes a difference but for the purposes of <clears throat> excuse me actually you know i should probably talk about both so the CRS system, you can see here, when it comes to foreign work experience, and I think that's what Shale was asking, the CRS score as opposed to having just one year. So I think Shale is asking about foreign work experience. The only place where foreign work experience applies in the context of the comprehensive ranking system is in the um, <clears throat> skill transferability factors. So if you go down here, and we'll just jump down till we get to the skill transferability, so here's the skill transferability factors. So when you have combinations, <coughs> excuse me, of foreign work experience, which starts here. So foreign work experience with good language, you can see that one in two years are treated the same. So you're not getting any more points, whether you have one year of foreign work experience or two years of foreign work experience. And that applies whether it's a combination of language here and work experience or foreign work experience and Canadian work experience. It's still based on one or two years. So the reality is there is no difference. So now if we go to the FSW eligibility and we open up the six selection factors here, you'll see if we scroll down until we get to work experience, <coughs> excuse me, this is where the difference does exist. So one year gives you nine points towards the 67 point pass mark, but two to three years are treated the same. So that's the difference between work experience. That's how it affects the calculation. And those who are applying outland outside of Canada, you have to meet a 67 point threshold under this selection factors for the federal skilled worker program. But most of you don't even know this is happening in the background because when you do your eligibility assessment as to whether or not you can actually get into the pool, that is where um, immigration does that assessment for you. So hopefully that helps Shale. We are going to wrap up right there with Shale. It was an absolutely amazing, wonderful Q&A today. We had a great turnout. I did not get to everybody that I wanted to. My apologies for that. Um, if you, but understand, guys, each of these questions that you ask, I use these to now start creating this list of little short videos, tutorials that I'm going to be releasing on the Canadian Immigration Institute YouTube channel. So thank you for watching today. Thank you for those of who who tuned in on Periscope or the Twitter version. Excuse me, uh, people who tuned in on Facebook, the Canadian Immigration Institute, as well as 
um, the Express Entry Law Private Facebook group. Go over and check it out. 125,000. And in that group, I will be announcing the, the special discounts. I'm going to be announcing it here on the, uh, the YouTube channel and on the Canadian Immigration Institute page. So watch for it. In honor of 125,000 people, which I never thought I would ever reach on this private Facebook group, woo, I'm going to celebrate. All right, guys, thanks so much. This is Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer, ex-immigration officer, and former high school teacher, thanking you for joining me on this live Canadian immigration Q&A and wishing you guys all the best as you navigate this crazy world that we call Canadian immigration. Take care, guys.